I believe that if you win the morning, you win the day. I believe that morning routines are incredibly powerful. And if you put first things first, like keeping the, the main thing is keeping the main thing the main thing. If you say what is most important to me and you do these things first thing in the morning, you always have time for the other stuff. And if you don't have time, cool. You got the more important things in. So things like, again, reading, things like working out, things like um, developing the relationships you have, whether at home or at work, that really important project you have. You might have to dig into your email to work on that project, but let's see if we can avoid that at all costs. If you need to pull that one out, don't get distracted by the others. Email, again, is a distraction from the important things in your life. What confidence is has nothing to do with winning or the leaderboard. What confidence is, is knowing that you giving your best efforts is enough. Okay, hello, Ben. Hello, Patrick. (laughs) Uh, Welcome to another episode of Chasing Excellence. Today, I've collected a list of things, and the list of things are are things that I've heard you say or seen you seen you say various places of things not to do. Mm-hmm. So instead of like a top ten, do these things and your life will be better. You sort of you talk often about things that you shouldn't do, right? Mm-hmm. So I've collected. Uh, we've got ten of them. So I'm going to walk you through each one, and then we'll oh, kind of talk cool. about uh, why one thing and 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 sort of where that came from. Yeah, I think uh, I like this. Um, Everyone's talking about things like, I think not to do's are as important as yeah. to do's. And everyone's got to do lists, right? right? But I think not to do lists are equally or if not more meaningful and powerful. And it's a different paradigm anyway, but I, I love it. Yeah, okay. let's chat. Cool. Okay, so number one, uh, don't hit the snooze button. I know that's something that we've talked about definitely on the, on the podcast before, but what does that mean? Why? Um, simple. So it's tied to the principle of proactivity. The very first thing you're supposed to do today is wake up. Mm -hmm. You're procrastinating the very first thing you're supposed to do. If you do that, I mean, what you're the cascade and the ripple effect is huge. So let's just start off the day the right way. Never, ever snooze. Mm -hmm. What is the, um, I, so assuming that you don't hit the snooze, what do you do first thing then? Are you, do you just like spring awake at five o'clock and you're good to go? Or no. is it like, was there a process of um, avoiding wait, the snooze so button? So every day I get tempted by the snooze button. Yeah. Like every day. Like it's, we live in the Northeast. It's cold. It's, you know, 525 in the morning. It's, you know, it's so much warmer under the covers. Got a lot to do today. You know, whatever it is. It's easy. It's easier. I, I just... I tell myself that's not who I am. Yeah. Like I, I literally, when I'm lying in bed, it's like I'm the type of guy that gets up at 5, yeah. 25. And I tell myself this actually is important. And this does reflect what you do in the rest of your life. If you can't do this, like this is not a big deal. Yeah. Like, like wake up. And it's one of those things that the short-term temptation seems so rewarding and so tempting. What are you really getting from nine more minutes in bed? And why is it nine minutes? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And same type of thing with like the cookie. The cookie is so tempting. Yep. What are you really getting from that cookie? The long term, you're going to be so much happier later on when you just like create the habit of, I don't eat cookies. When you create the habit of, I get up at 525. Yeah. Right. And also goes into, this is like, I could talk a lot about this, yeah. but it also goes into sleep quality, right? Mm-hmm. Which we've talked about on this podcast before, but it's better for you to set your alarm for 10 minutes later. This is most people, I didn't know this, but like, for a long time, um, it's better to set your own for 10 minutes later when you actually want to wake up than to disrupt your sleep before you get up. That's essentially what you're doing. Right. You're putting a disruption into your sleep to allow yourself the, the pleasure of procrastination. Mm-hmm. Sleep quality matters. Sleep is the, as high quality as you can until buzzer goes off. Out. Okay, cool. Number two, don't get mad in traffic. Yeah. So this is, I uh, can't imagine you getting mad in traffic, but, but yeah, I, I, I don't. Um, and it, with that at traffic, it's like, it's a microcosm for everything else. Right. It's a saying I say, to, but don't, if you get mad at traffic, you get mad at the weather. Um, if you have a person with road rage, you are missing, like, what are the things that you have control over? Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's one of those principles. It's like the circle of control principle. Like, 
um, the serenity prayer. God, give me the um, wisdom to take care of the things I can uh, to understand what I can control, what I cannot control, difference. and know the difference, um, which is actually the Alcoholics Anonymous yes. thing. If you are a type of person that gets mad at traffic, um, I'm telling you right now, you're not living as productive a life as you could. The easiest way to change your mindset is to recognize what you have control over and what you don't. You don't have control over the traffic. But what you do have control over is how early you leave for something, creating a buffer to make sure that if there is traffic, I'm still not late. Oh my gosh, there's traffic. Another opportunity, extra 10, 15 minutes for me to call my mom, listen to that podcast, think in deep meditation, whatever it is. So the don't get mad at traffic is just a saying I say for the fact that like, let's figure out what we actually have control over. Yeah. Related, I'm skipping down the list a little bit. Uh, don't show up late. Okay. Since so you just mentioned. Yeah. So don't show up late. It's um, to me, if you're late to something, you're selfish. What you're saying is my time is more valuable than yours. So if you have, um, if you're to work, right? Obviously that's a huge one. Like that goes without saying. Um, to a plane, like I get it. Like most people aren't late to those things, but what they are late for is let's, um, want to go for a run with me tomorrow morning at 6 a.m.? Let's go catch uh, coffee. Why don't we, um, you know, you have to drop your kids off for school. Like all the reason you're not late for the plane, but you are late for the other ones is because you're saying those aren't as important to you. And what you're saying is my extra time is I'm not willing to invest in the time to create the buffer, to create the, the timeline to make sure I am on time for these things. Now, if you're chronically late for everything, and we know some people that are, if you're late for the plane, if you're late for it, then it's a matter of trying to figure out um, what a lot of people, I'm, I don't know if this is a, a podcast about like how to fix these things, <laughs> but it's one, the first one is creating the buffer. Yep. So you have to have the buffer in place, which is, okay, if it, because this is what people do. It, I made it to Logan Airport once in 25 minutes. So it takes me 25 minutes to get to Logan. <laughs> Right. Because I made it there once in that time. Usually it takes me 30 to 32 minutes. And a lot of times it takes me 45. And there are times it takes me an hour and 15. So how long does it take you to get to Logan Airport? It takes you an hour, and an hour and 15 minutes to get to Logan Airport. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you get there and you get there early, great. Let's go get a coffee. Let's pull your laptop and relax. But it takes you, you take the longest one, not the shortest one. Right. And there's your buffer. Take it. Um, I guess the number four, don't tolerate gossip. Okay. So don't tolerate it is, um, is high on the list. The first one is don't gossip. Yep. Don't be the water cooler guy that's talking about people behind their backs. The, I am like, the more I read and the more I learn about leadership and the more I try and develop a team, you know, whether it's my staff or whatever it is, you know, the relationship with my wife and my family Everything is built off a few really fundamental principles. The first one being trust. And if you're talking, if we are gossiping back and forth about someone else, what I'm saying subconsciously, or even not, if I might not be saying it, but subconsciously what's what's resonating in my mind is I can't trust Patrick mm -hmm. because he talks about people behind their backs. So don't be that guy. Now, the next one is don't tolerate gossip. That takes a level of leadership. That's where you are in a circle and people are gossiping. It's you calling it out and stopping it. And that is, holy cow, Patrick stands up for people when he's not around. I can trust this guy because mm -hmm. he is going to defend me when I'm not here. Yep. Yep. It's a level of leadership that's we all can continue to work on, me included. Uh, number five, don't watch the news. Okay, so this um, is goes back to the, the traffic thing as well. It's like politics, what's going on in, I don't wanna say like we can't change the world, right? I don't wanna say be ignorant to what's going on in you know, some horrific things that's going on in different countries or the tragedy that happened um, two towns away from you, you know, where there was a, a, a fire and there's this, this person being taken to court and the last thing that Donald Trump said and um, the celebrity news. And as you can see, I'm starting to get farther and farther away from like truly important things. Yeah. The news, I think we should all, we just have to recognize what the news is. The news is entertainment. 
The news's job is not to inform you. What they're doing is they're trying to, the same way Instagram does, is grab your attention. Your attention is incredibly valuable. What are you paying attention to? Now, if you're paying attention to things that you can't affect, you can't move the needle on, that have no bearing on your life, you're wasting your time. You're not being productive. My saying for don't watch the news is let's focus on the things that we actually have control over. Let's focus on um, self-development and getting better. Let's focus on the relationships we have in our lives. Let's focus on that project, that side hustle, that thing you want to do, the thing you want to develop yourself into, that relationship you have, whatever that is. Focus on the things that you can influence and affect. The news is so far on the other side of that spectrum It should be avoided at all costs. If you pay attention to the conversations that people have that are news junkies, I'm telling you, they're not talking about things that they can infect. And this goes right to politics. Unless you are a policy maker, if you are trying to influence people to the left or to the right because you are on one side, you're having a lot of meaningless, I know it sounds important because you're talking about big, big items, you're having a lot of meaningless discussion. It's just one of those things that I think is such a distraction to our everyday lives. Let's push that away as best we can. Mm -hmm. Um, Number six, don't pass judgment. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, don't pass judgment. Don't criticize. This comes from Dale Carnegie's How to Win Funds and Influence People. The fastest way to get someone to not like you is to criticize them. Mm -hmm. And that's like, well, everyone's like, well, I don't criticize people. Think about when you give suggestions to your siblings, when you talk to- Never done that. Right, exactly. (laughs) Like you're you're like, or a friend and they're like, um, you know, it's just so easy. Or like you see, this is Heather's thing, is Heather's so good at this. Um, You see someone, the way someone's parenting some, their kids. It's so easy to pass judgment on that. Like, what are they doing? Here's the- you see uh, you're at a, um, a fair, or <laughs> I don't know why I choose a fair. You're out in public, right? So we I chose a fair. You're out in public and you see two parents walking two kids on leashes. Like you're like, what kind of parents are those? Like you're so quick to pass judgment. Well, you don't know. You don't know what that situation is. They might have runners and they are doing the best thing in the world for that kid because if that kid runs and let's say the, ki- the parents on as fast as the kid and the kid is a runner and he's gone like what's your options there Mm -hmm. it's so easy to pass judgment on so many different things what are people eating how people are moving in the gym like what are people's approaches to life like their religions their whatever it is let's not pretend we have all the answers because we really really don't Mm -hmm. Number seven, don't eat and scroll. So don't don't thumb through your phone while you're eating. Lunch. That's exactly what that is. Yeah. So if you are, um, this is about being present. Um, so um, you know, don't chew and scroll. Don't eat and phone. Whenever you are in a social gathering, here's my take. It's not. It doesn't. It doesn't um, just get become exclusive to you while you're eating. It's if you are ever with your friends or family or people you care about, don't look at your phone. Mm-hmm. Here's the deal is if you're looking at your phone, what you're saying, now I know this new generation millennials are just accustomed to it, but what you're actually saying is my phone and these people that are, I have, are what's on my phone is more important than you. That's really what's going on there. Mm-hmm. Now, if you are in a doctor's office, if you're in the line of the post office with strangers, yeah, whatever, go for it, rock and roll. Waste some time on Instagram or do something productive, mm-hmm. you know, by taking some, writing down some notes that are in your head. That's totally fine. But if you're out to dinner with people you care about, if you are in a conversation with people you care about, if you're driving in the car with people you care about, make sure you're paying attention to those people, not being distracted by your phone. Is that something that you found hard to instill? Yeah, of in, course like, it's hard. In- in Maya and Jonah or even, okay, so, even yourself? In myself, all yeah. of these things are hard. None of these things are easy. That's why we need these principles to live by to kind of get driven back to these things. For the younger generation, it's way, way harder. Now, we're lucky enough that um, my two youngest are really are young. They're six and about to be four, so mm-hmm. they're not on phones. 
Um, Maya is about as dialed in a 18 year old. She just turned 18 as you could possibly imagine on her own. Well, I don't know if it's on her own. We, you know, we play the little game Sunday nights, like let's see your battery life and Mm -hmm. where you're spending your time and how much, um, she deleted Snapchat on her own. She's like, I don't have time for this as well. She's a teenager though, right? She spends a lot of time on the phone on social. Um, Jonah's, uh, somewhere in between. He's not quite as good as Maya, but, um, you know, the kids live on there. But it is it, something you talk to them about. We talk about it. Yeah. We talk about it. It's a it's an awareness level. So if you, the first step to all this stuff is awareness. Like if you still snooze, but you are aware of what you're doing, step one, mm-hmm. right? If you're an alcoholic, but you're like, I have an addiction and you still drink, cool, step one. Mm-hmm. What we don't want to do is be like oblivious to it yeah. or this isn't hurting me. Right. This, I'm not causing problems. You're an alcoholic that you are causing problems to your health, your social, your work, and your families, your relationships, you're just not aware of it yet. That's the worst possible place to be. Let's just become aware of these things. If you're like, I'm in traffic and I just need to rage at this, like, why? Like, okay. And then you're, but as you're doing it, you're like, this is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Step one, yeah. right? Yep. Um, related to the the eating and scrolling, don't or sort of related. Don't look at email before lunch. Mm-hmm. This is the principle. This is first things first. Yep. So, what's the most important things? Um, it's funny what we what we tend to by default make important. Yep. We feel like, and this is again just don't email before lunch. But that's a saying I say just to kind of like layer. If it's eleven thirty or it's eleven or it's. But here's the deal: is it's it's not just about email. It's about the other stuff. Yep. It's about so. Here's the reasons why. I believe that if you win the morning, you win the day. I believe that morning routines are incredibly powerful. And if you put first things first, like keeping the the main thing is keeping the main thing, the main thing. If you say, what is most important to me? And you do these things first thing in the morning, you always have time for the other stuff. And if you don't have time, cool. You got the more important things in. So things like, again, reading, things like working out, things like um, developing the relationships you have, whether at home or at work, that really important project you have. You might have to dig into your email to work on that project, but let's see if we can avoid that at all costs. If you need to pull that one out, don't get distracted by the others. Email, again, is a distraction from the important things in your life. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we're at number nine. Don't leave dishes in the sink. Okay. So this is a a matter of like uh, details matter and don't procrastinate, right? Like every detail matters. It's the same thing with like, don't leave the house without making your bed. And there's a great um, Naval Academy speech. Commencement speech. Commencement speech given by a um, Navy SEAL commander in chief. And he starts the whole thing off with make your bed. Mm -hmm. That's his number one advice to these Naval Academy graduates is make your bed every morning. There's a lot of reasons behind that. I suggest people listen to this commencement speech because it's amazing. But whether it's make your bed or don't go to bed without the dishes or it's don't go to bed angry with your spouse or whatever it is, the idea is like finish things. Mm -hmm. Don't leave half done projects. Don't leave things for tomorrow. It It takes two, three minutes. Whatever takes two or three minutes, just do it. Mm -hmm. It takes longer to wait and do it later. Also, the second side of that principle is cluttered physical space, cluttered mind. If you live in a pigsty, if you love, if you live in a place that is um, not neat and orderly, I promise you your mind and everything else in your life is not as neat as orderly as it could be either. Agreed. Last one, don't wait for perfect. Okay, Um, so what (laughs) people... Um, people wait until they're ready to do everything, right? My saying is jump and grow wings on the way down. Like I'm going to wait until I um, start writing a book. I'm going to wait until I start that business. I'm going to wait until I get in shape before I start taking CrossFit. That's like, that's like saying, I'm going to wait until I learn how to play guitar before I take guitar lessons. Mm -hmm. Just start. You're never going to, anything that you want to do, 
just start, just do it. You will learn more by doing and making mistakes and you will be farther along than if you wait, try and make it perfect or forget about perfect, really, really good. Mm -hmm. And there we go. It's a Seth Godin saying of ship it. Like once it's out there, don't rewrite it and rewrite it and rewrite it and play this game. Like I gotta wait till it's perfect. I gotta wait till it's perfect. Just ship it. And you can iterate later on. You can do version 2.0. It's in the... Silicon Valley world, it's the MVP. It's a minimal viable product. It's the opposite of what the old school practice of launching a business was. Let's do all the market research. Let's figure out everything we can. Let's make this product as perfect as possible. And we're not gonna put it out there until it's perfect because we don't want the backlash. That's not the way it works now, particularly in software. Now it's what's the minimal, the tiniest little thing we can do knowing there's tons of imperfections, tons of mistakes. Let's launch that to the marketplace. Let's let them tell us how to make this better. The iPhone, when the first iPhone didn't have a calculator on it. Like how simple is that? They knew it didn't have a calculator on it, but they didn't even want to wait for that. They wanted to get it to the market. Same thing for you and starting CrossFit, you learning a language, you learn to play guitar, whatever it is, you asking that girl out, whatever it is, just go and do it. And along the way, you will learn more by doing than you will by procrastinating 100 times over. Yeah. Um, so much of this list going over it, so much of it <clears throat> sort of feels like it goes back to the very simple one of what's in your control and what's not. Yeah, uh, what's in your control, what's not, what's really important to you. Yeah. Um, you know, all those things are like um, principles based off of that. First yeah. things first, be proactive, circle of control. Um, they all are, are are stems of that because that's, you know, going back to like the, the Stoics and everyone else, that's really the thing. Let's focus on the things that you can influence. Yep. If you can't, you can't. Now, what a lot of people do is like traffic. I can't influence it, so whatever. I throw my hands up. Well, if you start to take a little more ownership. Yeah, I was going to say. Once you, you can. figure out what you can control yeah. within that. So if you leave earlier or you take a different route yep. or you reschedule your schedule. People are like, I can't control the weather. Like I, So like that's that's good. That's a step one. The worst is like. I'm living in the Northeast. I'm going to bitch and complain every, every time, time it's snows. below below 30 degrees. Like, guess what? Yeah, That's what it is. Yeah. But, but asserting control is deciding to wear a jacket or not wear a jacket. <laughs> or if it's or if you really don't like it, there's a place called San Diego. <laughs> you are allowed <laughs> to move to San Diego. Start to take ownership of your life. You complaining about the job you hate. Like, The first step of that is like, okay, I'm going to stop complaining about this. I don't have control over my boss. I don't, I can't control the industry I'm in. I can't control my work schedule. That's a good first step. Then the next step is the evolution of that is, wait a minute, can I control that? Mm -hmm. You can quit your job. You have control over what you do for a living. You do. Now, could it be hard? Could it be scary? Could it be a short-term hit to do that? Yes, of course it's going, yes. But don't pretend it's a choice. You are choosing to go to your job instead of that. This is the saying of like the the student going to the professor and saying, "Um, professor, I'm sorry, I'm gonna miss Friday's class. I'm on the track team and I have to go to a track meet um, that's two states away. And the professor is saying, you have to? or you choose to. And he says, well, I guess I don't have to go. He's like, you're right. You don't have to go to that track meet. You are choosing to go there instead of taking my class. Are you choosing to do that? So, and the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Like, Figure out that you're not mandated to do a lot of the stuff. You are choosing to live the life you're living this way. Take some ownership. Thank you. All right, that's it. That's your your 10 things not to do. Love it. <laughs> well, uh, I'll keep paying attention. Maybe we'll find 10 more. Great. All right.